Now, CNN correspondent Martin Savage, he's live in Chardon, and Ken Druck, he's an expert in healing after loss. He's also the author of The Real Rules of Life, How to Balance Life Terms with Your Own. Martin, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about what these kids and parents are going to have to go through over the next couple of days. But before I do, I really want to recognize Frank Hall, because it seems to me what this man did was so incredibly brave probably saved so many lives. What are people in the community saying about Frank Hall? Well, he's a hero, no doubt in many people's minds. He's not the only one, which you point out, but Frank Hall was the person who was overseeing the uh, study room that was taking place, study hall, inside of the cafeteria at the time of the shooting took place. He's an assistant football coach, pretty big guy, and he was the one that decided to go in chase after the shooter, which has been identified now by students as T.J. Lane. So very very crucial role there in that he may have interrupted the cycle of violence and got the shooter on the run the other person that's talked about here another teacher and that is joseph uh ritchie joseph ritchie's a math teacher when he heard the announcement lockdown when he heard gunfire in the hallway his students say first thing he did was told all the students to get down get in the crouch position and then he went to the back of the room opened a closet door, pulled out a bulletproof vest. I heard this from several students. A bulletproof vest puts it on and then goes out in the hallway to face the unknown to protect his students. He comes back a few moments later and is dragging one of the wounded students from out of the hallway and begins administering aid. So two teachers, dramatic stories out there well beyond the classroom now saving the lives of their students. Martin, that's just really incredible. Stuff, it's right? incredible what these teachers did for their students, not only them, the teachers who were quick in locking down those classrooms, the students who paid attention very quickly, the entire school doing so much there. Now, Ken, I want to talk about the students returning tomorrow with their parents. Seems to me to be a great move, bringing them back with their parents, letting parents and students get through their grief together in that school. How do you think that's going to help them tomorrow? Ryan, first of all, this community is doing so many heroic things already. Every, everything I've heard from Martin uh, about what's going on, the community coming together and really surrounding these families and the community of kids, the whole school community, uh, with a lot of support and a lot of love. Because right now, everybody is in a state of shock. Uh, everybody wishes they could change the channel and that this wasn't real. But it is, and they're having to face into it. The first step today is, is extraordinary, that everybody's getting together, getting grounded, and, and saying, what, what do we do? What do good and smart people do in horrific situations like this? And they will be prepared for the students to come tomorrow because they will have thought about what the students are likely to be asking what the students are likely to be experiencing, the sense of the loss of security and, and the sense of danger that they return with, and they'll be ready for those students. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that loss of security, but you also mentioned what we can do to help. You know, producers, I wonder if we can put this up. Folks, if you've been following this story and you're looking for ways to help the Chardon community, take a look at this. We did some research, and here's a way that you can help. You can donate. You see that right there to PNC Bank or... or Remember the Chardon Healing Fund, the United Way, you see the address right there. That's a way that you at home can maybe help this community. And, and Martin, we're talking about so many people pulling together to help, but, you know, Ken did touch on the issue of safety. Are there people in the community that are feeling concerned about their safety going forward in the school district? I'll tell you who's the most concerned is law enforcement. They're just worried that, you know, there could be someone that either in some way tries to emulate or tries to do something to capitalize on what already has been horrendous in this community but for the most part you talk to people here they get it that look this was a tragic event but it hasn't shaken their overall sense of security and safety they still believe it's a safe place they still believe chardon high is a good place for their kids to go to school it's a great place great community as well ken really quickly some kids out there aren't going to necessarily say I've got fears. I've got, I'm, I'm scared. How do we reach, give me one way how we maybe reach a child like that. If a parent's watching, they see something like this, they want to reach out to their child. They're not sure. One way we reach out to a child like that. You know, the first thing is to, is to make it safe for them to talk. If we're running around with our hair on fire or we're trying to fix them and put a nice spin on this, 
uh, put a big ribbon around it and have them move on too quickly, they're going to resist us. They're going to leave and they're going to go be with their friends because their friends are creating a safe environment for them to be going through the natural experience of coming out of shock and facing into this reality, which is going to take months to come. And at the epicenter of all this, and the first step, of course, is the families themselves, is how do we honor these families? How do we help them through these unspeakable first moments? And honoring and memorializing these children who have died and who've been injured and their families, I think, is the first step. Ken Martin, thank you so much. Appreciate it.